Hi everyone, I'm Bernard, I'm one of the Psychology Academic Mentors and in this tutorial I'll be showing you how to do APA referencing. This session serves only as an introduction. For more information and to develop your skills further, please refer to the 7th edition of the new APA publication manual, which is on the bottom right here. So in this session today, I'll be covering the basics of in-text citations, the basics of reference lists, so in-text citations is in the text, reference list is at the end of the text, whether it's um, the end of the essay, end of a report. Inclusive and bias-free language, which is a new development within the APA publication system. And finally, where to find useful resources for you to develop your skills further, as well as the publication that you can either um, buy or um, rent from the library. So let's begin. So what is APA? APA is a style, writing style and format which has clear guidelines for an academic or publisher and observing clear uh, rules in order for it to be relevant for the written material. It concerns many things, but in this session we're focusing on exclusively on citation of references. But APA applies for many things such as a presentation numbers, um, tables and figures, the tone and how you write, there's so much that APA can go into, but today we'll be focusing on the referencing. But if you do require further sessions on APA for any of these aspects, then you can contact us and details will be provided at the end of this session. So let's begin with in-text citations uh, for books and journal articles, because those are the resources you would be taking most of your information from and putting into your, uh, your written material, whether it's your essays or reports. So if you wanted to begin or start the sentence with the author, then it will simply be the surname and the date and the date only in brackets. So for example, Bowie, 1989, but 1989 is in the bracket, produced the internal working model. If, however, you have a trail of thought or idea or paragraph from the source, then you and you want you will put the reference at the end the citation at the end it'll be Ainsworth 1978 so the surname and the date all in brackets and I've given you an example here what that looks like so if you're beginning the sentence surname and then the date in brackets if you're saying a sentence a thought a paragraph and you're citing at the end it'll be Ainsworth or the surname date so in this instance Ainsworth 1978 all in brackets but of course, there's usually multiple authors involved in a resource you are taking information from. So what do you do in these circumstances? Still the same thing where we have here with uh, the first work by one author, surname, date in brackets if you're first citing this author and for following subsequent citations. If you're saying an idea, a paragraph or thought, then it would be the Bowlby, um, and the date, so surname and the date, all in brackets together. We've covered that already. Similar format for two authors, just the same as before. The only addition is you have the extra name here. So Bowlby and Robertson with the year 1952 only in brackets. If you're starting the conversation or the sentence with the authors, um, if you're leading to an idea, thought or paragraph, then it'd be Bowlby and Robertson all in brackets and the dates as well, or all the authors want Smith and Bob or whoever, all and, and the date, all in brackets. If you have three or more authors, so three or more authors, you can simply say Ainsworth et al. So if it was Ainsworth, Wolby and Robinson, you wouldn't have to say that, it's just simply Ainsworth et al, followed by 1978 in brackets, the date. This is for you, the first citations. If you had an idea or trail of thought, Paragraph, then it'll just be the full um, surname, et al, the date, all in brackets. If you have groups, similar format here, BPS, the full name of the group. So in this instance, we've got the BPS, um, and then we have the dates again here. And then for here, it's BPS and the date, all in brackets together. So we've moved from the in-text citations. We're now moving into how you actually reference um, two common uh, resources, which is the books and journal articles. 
beginning of a book. So I'm going to break it down and bring it all together. So we have here an example of how you would do it. Starting with the author, the surname of the author, so last name, comma, first initial, full stop, second initial, full stop. That's if they have second initials. If they don't, don't worry about it. So we have Bobby dot J comma J dot B dot. This is followed by the year of publication, the full stop with the year of publication being in brackets. So 1988 in brackets, full stop or parentheses. Then we have the title, all in italics and full stop. So here is a secure base, clinical applications of attachment theory. And finally, we have the publisher, which is Routledge. And this goes towards the end. So it follows that format, author, year of publication, title, publisher. So how would this look like if we bring it all together? Here we go. So both surname, comma, first initial, full stop, the date in brackets, full stop, the title of the book in italics, full stop, and finally the publisher. Of course, like many books, they're constantly being updated. So depending on the edition you have, you just put the edition in brackets at the end of the title. So I've got it here in red, the fifth edition. There could be more updated editions than this, followed by the publisher. So it goes, the edition goes after the title and before the publisher. Journal articles follow a similar format with the surname, the comma, the first initial, full stop, second initial, full stop. So I've got it here, similar to uh, the previous life of the book. Bobby, comma, first in J, first initial, full stop, second initial, full stop. Um, the year of publication and in, in the date in the year and the full stop. The name of the journal article. So every journal article has a title. So in this one, it's a symposium of the contribution of current theories to understand of child development. This will be um, lowercase full stop and the name of the journal where it belongs to it. Every journal article um, belongs to a type of journal. In this example here, it will be the British Journal of Medical Psychology, comma, in italics. So it's not the type in the book. It was in the book title was in italics, but not so for a journal article. It's actually the, the journal we got it from, which is in italics. Followed by the volume number, which is in italics as well, and the issue number, all in brackets and a comma afterwards. Page number. So the page numbers of what it ranges from. So in this instance, it's 230 to page 240, full stop. And the DOI or the web link of where you can easily retrieve. If you clicked on it, it will take, it should take you directly to the article if you have access rights to that article. And so we will bring this all together in a second. I want to highlight to you that the DOI number should appear on most journal articles now, except for older, much, much more dated journal articles. You may not have that, but most journal articles now should have the DOI number. Um, and to find it, you will have it at the, at the top of the journal article and you will have it here or I have the bottom page of the journal article as well. So we have the format similar to the book. The only difference is if we have the name of journal article, it's not in italics, but the name of where you got the journal from, the journal article from, which is the British Journal of Medical Psychology in italics, volume number italics, issue number and a comma um, in, um, which is usually in brackets, to, so the issue number in brackets, uh, pages and full stop and URL or DOI number. So if we brought that all together, we should, it should look like this. With the, central, the commas and four stops, the year in brackets, the full stop, title of the journal article, and you can see in italics, it's the title of the journal, of the name of the journal it belongs to, volume number in italics, issue number in brackets, comma, the page number, full stop, and finally, the actual DOI or UAL number in which you can retrieve the article from, which makes life a little bit more easier. But of course, in some instances, where uh, there'll be maybe use of 
websites. Websites is not typically a common um, place to go to, maybe for introductory material for you to understand information, or in case you cannot find it from a book or from a journal or from any resource, then the website may be useful. Of course, there's many other mediums that you may want to use that has to be referenced. Um, it could be a blog, it could be a YouTube video, it could be a social media site. But either way, the APA website, the APA manual, should I say, will direct you to how you would reference those. But I'll give you a basic example of how you reference a website. So it begins with the author, similar, the first uh, comma, first initial, will stop the year, the month of the day that it was either accessed or modified. Um, if you can get the map modification date, it will either be at the top or bottom of the web page. If you can't find the material, just say when you actually accessed the website. So the year, the month and the day. And then we have the title of the work, the name of where you got um, the site, the website from, and its URL or web link. So Simple Psychology is one example I will use here. It's a common um, website that students like to go to just to understand basic concepts first. Um, so you have the surname McLeod, initials, uh, the year, the month, and the day, the title and italics, attachment theory, the website is simply psychology and where you retrieved it from. And then if you had to do an in-text or write an in-text of the, of the reference, it would be McLeod and the year you got it from, or Simply Psychology 2007, if you can't find the name of the author of that web page, you can just use the name of the website followed by the date in brackets. Of course, we have direct quotations. We try to avoid, uh, and we don't encourage students to use direct quotations, um, because we encourage paraphrasing and summarizing material that they've got from resources into their own words. It's good practice, but in case you feel you have to take word for word um, from another source or author, then there's there's a way how you should reference, you should cite this in the text, not the reference list, in the text. So a direct quotation reproduces the words of another writer. Verbatim means word for word and is displayed in quotation marks. That's if the quotation is fewer than 40 words, or if it's a block quotation, a block quotation is when it's more than 30 words, then you'll follow this format. When you include a direct quotation in a paper, include the author, the date, the page number on which the quotation can be found. So in this example here, I have romantic partners maintain both bias and realistic views of a core relationship trait, which is physical attractiveness or in uh, quotes, and then at the end you have the surnames um, and the date and the page number as stated before. So Solomon and Vaziri, uh, 2014, the page number. Or if you wanted to begin the sentence with the author and then follow up with the quote, it will be Sol Solomon and Vaziri in brackets 2014. Remember the previous slides about whether you're starting the conversation with the author or ending that trail of thought, paragraph or idea from the author, then it will be, in this instance, Solomon of Azari found in 2014 that the romantic partners maintain both bias, etc, etc. But at the end, it's page 524 in brackets. So of course, you may have realized when you're reading materials in any academic subject area, in particular psychology, that you have a textbook that that's quotes another or cites another author. This is known as secondary referencing. So you may have read something on Bowlby in a textbook without ever having read the original Bowlby publication. So example, you may read about Bowlby's attachment styles or uh, Bowlby's theory and attachment on a developmental psychology textbook. So how would you do an in-text citation in this example? So this is what you will typically do. You will start with the first primary author, so the author within the book, the textbook. So Bowlby, who's been cited in a developmental psychology textbook, date of that publication, so 1980, Bowlby, um, 1989, as cited in 
Davy, let's say hypothetically that Davy is the developmental psych, the editor or author of the developmental psychology textbook, 2004, formulated the internal working model of attachment. So you're so you're starting the conversation by saying Bowlby, 1989, as cited in Davy, 2004. So from the date of the first primary author to the date of the secondary author or the textbook, there's a there's a bracket there. But similar, if you have a paragraph or idea from this, then you'll just say at the end, Bowlby 99, as cited in Davy 2004. But the key thing here is this. When you do the reference list, it shouldn't have cited as Bol Davy. It should, no, it will be Davy, but not Bowlby. It will be Davy you cite. From the textbook you got it from so save is it was davy 2004 developmental psychology that's what you would cite you want to cite bowlby unless you have read bowlby's material then you'll cite bowlby's material but if you're referring to the textbook and never have read the primary source which is um, by bowlby then you cite davy's textbook but this should be used only where the original source is unavailable we always encourage students as good practice to refer to the primary resource, which is usually the original article or book done by that person, um, not from maybe a, a introductory textbook or website. But it is still quite handy, but it's good practice as well to try and avoid and use the main source if you can, and if you can retrieve it and it's available. So we move on to inc inclusive and bias free language. Now, as I said, there's new conventions in the APA uh, 7th edition publication manual. And this publication manual contains a separate chapter on this topic in chapter five. If you do have the manual or you want to get the manual, there's chapter five and it will give you that information. And the guidelines in there provides help to reduce bias. So that means sort of um, unfairness in the remarks and what you say about topics such as gender, age, disability, racial and ethnic identity, and sexual orientation. So you're being sensitive to these labels and describing individuals at the appropriate level of specificity. Specificity, I can never pronounce that word. <laughs> but either way, you're being sensitive to these labels and considering these different backgrounds. So how you would actually do that is the singular, they or they is endorsed as a gender neutral pronoun. So it's all about being gender neutral here. So I'll give you an example of what you shouldn't say and what um, APA would encourage you to say instead. So a researcher's career depends on how often he or she is cited. That is incorrect, which is saying he or she. A researcher's career depends on how often they are cited. This is completely correct. This is the right way to do it. And this is the good way to go about it. So just bear that in mind. If you're still not sure, please refer to that APA publication manual. But this is clearly just to highlight to you that there are changes in how you write and how you refer to individuals when you're writing in your um, essays or um, reports. So that's the main things. If you do need uh, more information, if you do need more assistance, have any more questions based on uh, what you've just heard, we have any more material you would like to recordings you'd like to see then simply you can either email myself um you, or you can email uh, alide or day who will both be more than happy to help you um and you can definitely uh email us and we can point you in the right direction for this so i deal with the extended psychology undergraduate coaching and counseling under undergraduates and day deals with extended the undergraduates for psychology and the psychology postgraduates and master's level 